There's a disease out there. There's a disease out there that kills more people than cancers of the brain, stomach, ovary or kidney. There's a disease out there that no blood test or x-ray can diagnose. There's a disease out there that won't be cured by just medication. There's a disease out there that kills three men for every woman. There's a disease out there that kills more people than cancer of the brain, stomach, ovary or kidney. But nobody has to die from it. There's a disease out there that no blood test or x-ray can diagnose. But all of us can carry out a test on each other. Each other. Each other. Each other. Just by asking about it. There's a disease out there that won't be cured by just medication. But listening, empathising, caring and helping out can destroy it. There's a disease out there that kills three men for every woman. But you have the power to help them survive it. 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 A sincere and heartfelt welcome to all of you for joining us this evening. We appreciate it so much. Thank you so much for being here. This is a really exciting launch for all of us and we are very, very proud to launch on World Suicide Prevention Day. Um, personally, after losing a very close friend to suicide, it's extra special because it's, it, for me, it's about turning that pain into something very positive. So thank you on behalf of all of us uh, for joining us here today. Okay, so what are we going to cover over the next hour? We're going to let you know who we are and why we felt the need to act around suicide reduction. The model that we've created, how we've taken it, built it and developed the products that are being launched today. We're going to talk to you about what the products are and who they're aimed at. And finally, we're going to give you our own call to action and call to arms so that we can all play a part in achieving the role in suicide reduction. And we'll also see if anyone has any Q&A at the end as well. Last week, the 2019 suicide statistics were released and we have again seen a year-on-year -year increase. In the three quarters of a year that's passed since then, we've seen COVID-19 hit the UK and lockdown impact significantly on people's well-being. The consequences of that lockdown, from limiting our social interactions to the exam situation and a plunge into global recession, will impact our society for years to come. 2020 has not been a good year for mental health. Now is arguably more important than any other time in our lives to be vigilant about suicide. But consider the subject for a moment. It carries so much stigma that people often struggle to even say the word out loud. And if that's true of you, how likely are you to start a conversation on the subject with someone that you can see is struggling? Suicidal thoughts are common, with more than one in five of us having had them at some time in our lives. Just think about that for a moment. Statistically, that's four footballers on every pitch, 10 out of every 50 of your friends. But how can we fully convey a positive message if it's a conversation that we're reluctant to have? If we can normalize the conversation, we can save lives, far more lives than you may think. Research suggests that every death by suicide has an impact on over 100 lives, with over 20 of those people left devastated. If we can normalize the conversation, we can save lives and safeguard the futures of thousands of people.
So good afternoon from the STEPS team. Uh, we'd just like to quickly introduce ourselves before we move forward. I'm Bob, Bob Kitchen. I'm one of the founders of Big Dog Little Dog. We're a, a small community interest company that provides training on mental health, particularly within the workplace. And good afternoon, everybody. I'm Kevin Moore. I'm the other half of Big Dog Little Dog, and we created the model that everything you're going to see this afternoon is based on. But pretty soon after creating and deploying it, it became obvious that it could have a far greater impact than just us two. So we very quickly wanted to see how could we mobilize and nationalize this program. Hello, I'm Lucy Dunleavy, CEO and founder of Learnbox. Learnbox is a film production company that specializes in educational content and digitalizing learning. And we got involved for exactly the reason that Kev's just talked about, because we wanted to take this course and through the power of technology, have maximum reach and impact. Hello, my name is David Gallagher. I'm Chief Executive at NCFE. Um, NCFE is first and foremost an educational charity uh, with a particular emphasis on supporting to create a, a fairer and more inclusive society through the power of education. Uh, we work with every college in England. We work with, uh, I think, over 70% of private training providers now in England, but we also work internationally as well. Uh, our main business uh, uh, functions are in awarding and assessment. Hello, my name is Katrina Thomas. I am the project manager at AELP and a business psychologist. AELP is a national membership organization that represents the interests of all over 16 providers. We got involved in this project because we feel this initiative is absolutely vital to create barriers, such as reservations for mental issues. I'm keen to reach out to our member providers to share best practices for the prevention, which they can then implement in respect to both myself and the members. I'm not sure if people quite got that, Katrina, um, but we're, Katrina's going to be speaking later on as well, so we'll give you a little bit more of a, an update on Katrina as well if you didn't quite hear that. Uh, but next up, we've got um, a video that we'd like to share with you. This is one of our suicide survivor stories. This is the fabulous Satvia, who is an incredible human being. It was an absolute pleasure to meet her. Um, and thank you again, Satvia, for giving your time. Them. And I think a lot of things for me built up over a period of time and then my crisis point emerged for me bank holiday last year and I personally, and this is no disrespect to those around me, I feel that people didn't intervene when they could have and I say that because I know I've intervened with people around me, you know I see people and I'm quite, and it is because of the work that I do, but I'm quite confident in asking someone pretty directly, you know, are you feeling suicidal, are you having thoughts of taking your own life? Um, even if they haven't explicitly said it just by the undertones of you know the conversation that we've had and nobody asked me but for me it's more important it's the other side that when we do reach out for help that we get it and people are actively listening and I know that's a cliche psychological term you know active listening but we are listening and we're not dismissing and we're not saying oh but if you're really that bad you wouldn't be going to work you won't be getting up you won't be getting dressed you won't be able to Stop looking at that and listen to what they are saying to you. I think that is a key for me. And what we've seen in recent years is a very encouraging take up of mental health advocacy courses. And we've seen this across employers in all sectors and increasingly in educational establishments. And those programs, and I'll name check Mental Health First Aid as the flagship program in this country, they do a fantastic job in increasing the population's mental health literacy. They cover the subject of suicide amongst many other. And all of these courses will make the same point, that asking saves lives. But those courses with the broad curriculum they have, have to stop short of actually saying how to have that conversation. So recognizing this, we created the STEPS suite of training uh, and it aims to equip learners with those important points of awareness around suicide, risk factors, and the supports available to people. But critically, STEPS also goes on to enable learners to be able to have that conversation with someone that they may be concerned is at risk of suicide. STEPS is a mnemonic, which provides a structure that anyone can use to manage these potentially life-saving conversations. 
Following the steps of mnemonic enables someone, in fact anyone, to engage a person in a natural conversational way, then progress that conversation, exploring what's going on for the person, what they're experiencing personally, moving into asking that key question, are you thinking about suicide? And then, importantly, moving the person forward to jointly identifying what help would be most appropriate. Steps really for us is about a suite of training which equips learners not just with awareness and knowledge of suicide, but also the skills and the confidence to importantly have that conversation with someone that they may be concerned is at risk of suicide. It is a mnemonic and I'll just quickly walk you through those stages of steps. I gather that's the bit that probably got lost last time. So what does it stand for? The first S of steps stands for situation. So it's about us engaging someone in a conversational way, quite a natural, normal conversational way, and asking them about what's going on. That maybe we know, maybe we don't, but it's about finding out what's going on for that person. We then move into the T of steps, which is about tolerance. Having identified what's going on, what their situation is, we ask and we look to find out more about how they are coping and managing with that situation, both practically and in other ways. We then move into the E of steps as we manage that conversation moving forward. E is for emotions, and that's about asking people how they're feeling, how they're coping with those emotions, what's really going on there for them. And then we move the conversation forward to the P, perspective. This is very much about helping people explore and communicate with us how they see things, what they're thinking, particularly looking forward what's their view on the future and how they might be able to take things forward. If they see a future at all, of course, is really important. And by that point, we're in a good position to assess whether we feel this is someone who may well be really at risk of suicide. That moves us on to the final S, which breaks into three parts. The first part of that last S is about asking that question. Are you thinking of killing yourself? Are you thinking of ending your life? And then we move into asking about solutions. We ask the person, what solutions did they think would help? Maybe they have experience from previously, so we explore that with them. But it's about putting the person in the center of finding that solution moving forward. Having done that, we move into the final part of the model where we explore and we suggest supports that can be available to someone that they may want to include in that solution as well. So that's the steps model. So oh, for me, AELP have worked with uh, BDLE since their creation. Uh, Paul Warner, the Director of Research and Development, introduced me to Kev, Bob and Lucy. With my background in psychology, my current PhD research into mental health and communication in education and my personal experience of suicide, I offered my skills in the evaluation of the qualifications. Thanks, Katrina. Um, for me, I had a conversation with Paul Warner from AELP. It was a very personal conversation about how suicide had affected us in our personal lives. Um, and on the back of that conversation, we both felt compelled to do something. Uh, Paul introduced me to BDLD, who told me all about the programme, um, which you can imagine I was just like, wow. Um, and very quickly got into David's ear, um, but I don't think he needed much persuasion. Yeah, thanks, Lucy. So I'll, I'll just tell you a little bit about how NCFE became involved. And then, Bob, um, um, you'll have probably seen the chat by now, but I think we, we cut out for virtually every bit of your section. So we'll, we'll just need to loop back around back to you, Bob, if that's all right. So I'll just talk very briefly. Um, so as I mentioned, uh, NCFE is a, a, an educational charity and, and a national awarding organisation. Um, and when both Lucy and Kevin got in touch with me at a very similar time about this programme, um, it, it really struck a chord with me. Um, one, because we had the, the scale, um, uh, well, the capability to accredit the programme, but also the scale to try and get that out to as many people as we possibly could uh, to, to mitigate the, the risk of people dying from suicide. Um, so it really was a, a very easy decision for, for, for me to take with the team to say that, look, we'll, we'll invest our resources in helping to develop this programme, to accredit it, to provide that quality assurance to make sure that it's robust and also play a role through our channels of getting it out to as many people as possible. 
and you know but both Kevin and I had that background in welfare to work and, and Lucy as well actually where you know we worked in some of the toughest communities with some of the most disadvantaged groups um, who, who, where we know there's going to be a particular challenge with, with everything that's going on in the world right now but we also know that suicide pervades every part of society you know every um, people from all sorts of different backgrounds demographic situations um, so just a really important uh, role that we wanted to play in getting this to as many people as possible um, and so that's why we were very happy to, to help to, to power the program. Next up we're going to show you another short video from a suicide survivor who again kindly gave his time um, and was absolutely fabulous. It was an absolute pleasure to meet him. So without further ado, I'd, we'd like to share with you a piece of Steve's story. Suicide doesn't solve the problem, but it ultimately stops you ever getting a resolution. It is a front line, you know, nothing, nothing will ever come of it. It feels like there is no way out. That's how it feels. That your mind, in a depressive state, your mind is a liar and you cannot escape your mind. Um, and it, it tells you things that aren't true. Um, it tells you that you're not worth anything. It tells you that nobody cares. It tells you that everyone will be better off without you there. And you, because it's your, you know, you believe it. Um, it, it it's, a, it's a lie. It's a lie. And all that suicide does is stop any the possibility of anything getting better. Um, it doesn't help things get better. It just stops that possibility. Thank you once again to Steve. Okay, so let's have a look at the courses and what they cover. I'd next like to introduce you to Lee Barrett Duggan from NCFE to explain uh, the level two qualification. So over to you, Lee. Thank you, Lucy. The level two award in suicide awareness is a short knowledge-based award about understanding suicide. It consists of two days training and assessment activity. The content covers risk, risk factors why people might consider suicide, the warning signs, the truth about asking people the question and what works to help people choose life. The qualification is aimed at the general public for those aged 16 and above and what we want is to destigmatize and democratize suicide. Thank you. Thank you Lee. Um, okay, the, the next course is the level two online version, which has been put together from LearnBox. So rather than me talking at you even more, I'm sure you're sick of the sound of my voice. Um, at LearnBox, we, we believe in letting the videos do the talking. So we've put together a short video that shows you how it works. The LearnBox platform offers a simple but comprehensive user experience for learners, tutors and assessors and couldn't be easier to use on any device and at any time. The course is broken down into six modules and once underway, learners will watch standardised video with film production values and complete on-course assessments which are marked by the system, giving instant feedback. And not only is the quality of the content great, but it is also delivered by Kev and Bob from BDLD, the creators of the course. An additional bonus is the videos can be re-watched at any time and as many times as required. We've created this course in a digital format to have maximum reach and impact because of the size of the suicide pandemic we are in, with the intention of destigmatizing and democratizing suicide. To find out more, please contact steps at cash.org.uk. Let's work together to save lives. Okay, uh, Project Step was, Steps was well underway, regardless of COVID. Uh, too many people had had too many conversations and there was too much passion and momentum flowing. However, the two factors are important from different perspectives. Um, lockdown happened and what, what should have been a two-year project um, then came together in, in six months, uh, partly because of the 
less travel that we're all doing um, and obviously wanting to get, get cracking with this as soon as possible um, because of the complications that lockdown and, and COVID would, would cause for society. COVID and lockdown are sure to have a significant impact on suicide rates now and in the months ahead. Um, so without further ado, I've got great pleasure in introducing Peter Kelly, a senior psychologist from the Health and Safety Executive, to discuss the impact of COVID on mental health. Thanks, okay. Peter. Hiya. Hopefully you can see me. Um, yeah, so um, I thank you for the invitation. Um, I will be here really just to talk to you about uh, the emerging uh, mental health crisis that we do have because of COVID-19 and a global recession. Uh, in essence, if you were looking for the perfect storm, then this, this would be it. Um, but my talk is really about the prevention of uh, and the promote, prevention of mental illness, but also the promotion of mental health within work. So, Clive, if you can put my first slide on, that'd be helpful. So really what we're looking at here today is we're looking at coronavirus. As you can see, um, it went bypass most of you, but we are now in a global pandemic. Uh, we also have a global recession. And if you look back over the course of history, whenever you have a recession, you have an increase in mental health. Whenever you have a pandemic, you have an increase in mental health. Uh, mental illness and if you combine those together then uh, the probability is meant uh, people's mental health and mental illness will be impacted significantly because essentially next slide Clive uh, Clive next slide oh there we go it's, it's up okay good uh, we, what we really want to do is to have a normal life and what that means is to go back to the normality of what we had before before the pandemic What's interesting for me uh, is that actually over the course of the last 15 years, I've been uh, working 20 years in this field. Uh, I was a bit, really a bit of a lone ranger at the beginning saying we need to look after people's mental health. We need to make workplaces, places that promote mental health uh, and not create mental illness. And yet in the last probably 10 years, we've seen a raft of people coming along offering solutions, but most of those are at an individual level. And then when we get to a pandemic, it doesn't really matter how emotionally resilient you are or mindful of your situation. We're in a situation where the pandemic takes control away from us. What we want is that normal life. Uh, next one, Clive. Now, this is a, a model I've been trying to use or a figure I've been trying to help to describe what, what is really happening uh, as, I, as I see it at the moment. At the beginning of the lockdown period, people begin to have a reaction. Their mental health is impacted and we begin to see a rise in mental illness. If you can see the, the yellow arrow here. Um, and then once we get into a lockdown situation that we're in, we begin to adapt. And as we come out of that lockdown, we see an increase again in people's mental illness or, uh, and the higher rates of depression, anxiety. This, uh, this model, I think perfectly illustrates what we will be doing for the next two years is we're going to have times when as we go into potentially local lockdowns our mental mental health will be impacted but then we'll adapt to that situation but then as we come out of it we, we may be impacted uh, again by it and i think the really important thing to take on consideration here is it's not if we're going to have a mental uh, illness it's when and it's how we we tackle it uh, uh, preventing uh, mental illness by looking at promotion people's mental health. Next one, Clive. Because what we really want to do is to find a way that we can uh, work to find a new normal to help each other stay strong and hopeful. The, the, the reality is that the pandemic has taken one very key thing away, it's support and that sense of supporting each other. Sitting behind a screen or doing a doing a, a Zoom or a Teams meeting is not the same as having a person that's in front of you and connecting with, connecting with that person. But we've got to find a way through this. We've got to find different ways to reach out to each other and support each other. Support is a key element of, of getting people through difficult periods of time. So, so if you can go to the next slide, please. And this is really what I want to sort of get into what the pandemic has done and what the recession is doing is it's creating this this need for social distancing. 
we're, we're not allowed to engage and be with people and connect with people in exactly the same way. And what we do need to be doing is realizing that social distancing doesn't have to be social disconnect. And simply being on a Zoom call and saying to someone, seeing their face is not the same as actually picking up the phone and asking them, how are you, you know, how are things going? Do you fancy, you know, a virtual wine or a virtual beer? It, and in that so for me if you're going to see the emerging issue of mental illness during the pandemic and the recession we have to look at the prevention and we prevent by promoting positive mental health by looking at how we support people and how we engage with people and if we start having simple conversations bob hoskins Hosk, hoskins said it didn't he it's good to talk it starts with a conversation and, and, and actually, when you are with people who are experiencing um, depression and anxiety, simply having a conversation can, can, make, can make the world of difference. And, and that's, uh, that's essentially what I'm trying to support you. So please look to prevent, promote mental health and work at listening to your people and listening to what they're saying. And remember that we ha we have three key senses: our ability to hear, to see, and and to speak when when needed. Why do we not use them when we're in the context of work? What the simple message is: How are you? You know, how are things going? Just a very straightforward conversation. Okay, um, that's me finished, Lucy. And uh, there you go. Thanks, Peter. Thank you very much. Really appreciate that. Um, clearly, it's, it's never been more important time to be able to have a mental health conversation and particularly to reduce suicides. Um, I'd like to pass you over to Bob now, who's going to talk you through the level three qualification. Thank you, Luce. And uh, you've heard from Lee about the level two and the video from Lucy around the level two by the LearnBox platform. I'm just struck at the power of the LearnBox platform as well. It's the first time in months since lockdown that you've been able to see online why Big Dog, Little Dog are called Big Dog, Little Dog. Um, thank you. So I'm just going to tell you a little bit about the Level 3 qualification. A whole suite of courses is based on the STEPS model, but its greatest use is in enabling those conversations. And that's where the Level 3 course really comes into its own. Level 3 is a short award aimed at providing suicide gatekeepers with the tools needed to have that structured, positive, outcome-focused conversation with someone who may be at risk of suicide. Level three is a one-day course that covers the main knowledge areas that are covered by level two, but it then goes on to help learners understand in detail each stage of the STEPS model and then practice applying them in the suicide conversation context. Level three uses case studies, group activities, videos, including testimony from people who've survived suicide crisis and now taking a lead on informing and helping others, and role plays. All with a view to ensuring that people learn the model and are confident putting it into practice from the very first time once they've finished the training. Level three, we feel, is particularly aimed at frontline workers. And by that, what we mean is anyone whose work or volunteering time or their wider life experiences mean that they may encounter people at risk of suicide. We want people to be able to use this to normalize the conversation. Thanks, Bob. So now you've all heard about the level two and the level three programs. Just a very brief summary. Level two is a knowledge based award on understanding suicide, developing suicide awareness. The level three award is about having those conversations with someone who might be considering suicide. And from today, any cash NCFE centre can apply for accreditation to offer either or both of those. There are clear guidelines within the qualification specifications on what the trainer requirements are. We are conscious that there are some trainers out there who have never delivered around mental health, around suicide prevention before. Equally, there might be trainers out there who want to be able to deliver it the way it's always existed in our head. So we've also created a level four train the trainer program, not off qual regulated, but accredited by NCFE. 
So that train the trainer program has two optional units to it. <clears throat> Unit one is a two day training program on how to deliver that level two in suicide awareness. Unit two is a three day program on how to deliver the level three. And that program will only be delivered by myself and the little dog. Also people coming on to that trainer training, which isn't compulsory if the specification is met elsewhere, do also walk away with the resources needed to deliver it as we do, the slide deck, the handouts, the digital resources. We'll be taking uh, in expressions of interest on that course from today. Thanks, Kev. Right from the very start of this project, we want it to be an evidence-based course with strong feedback loops for its continuous improvement. It gives me great pleasure to welcome back Trina Thomas, who is our in-team business psychologist, to explain this in more detail. Thank you so much, Lucy, and I hope that the uh, the Wi-Fi works well today. Um, just to go over, I feel that it cut out earlier on. Um, I'm from AELP, I'm the project manager at AELP, and as Lucy said, a business psychologist. And just to run over what AELP does, the national membership organization that represents the interest of all over 16 providers. And we felt it was incredibly important to uh, reach out to our member providers to share best practice on suicide prevention, which they can then implement in respect of both their staff and learners. So as Lucy has said, measuring the impact of the qualifi qualification is vital and allows for evidential practice that will improve the content of the course and provide opportunity for longitudinal studies. There are evaluation pathways for level two, level three, and level four that have been created. For level two, there will be a pre and post course survey to measure the knowledge gained through the course and ways in which this new knowledge may be implemented moving forward. There will also be opportunities for learners to feedback any areas that they would like to see incorporated for the future. Level three is where we expect the evaluation process to be most effective. Level three is the practitioner level where learners will gain valuable skills to be able to have conversations with those at risk of suicide. Through level three, there will be the pre and post surveys to establish knowledge gain, gained. And on completion of level three course, there will be scheduled three and six month follow up surveys to evidence the effectiveness of the course and ways in which qualified practitioners have applied their knowledge and have reflected upon their experience. There will also be opportunities for the capturing of case studies, peer network and annual events. This will be continuously built upon and will validate evidence that will measure the impact of this qualification. Level four consists of follow up follow ups to identify how the course is maintaining impact and to ensure that those trained have access to available resources and continued professional development. And this will be available through the established peer networks. Thank you. And just building on from that comment about peer networks, our vision within the STEPS team is wider than providing training and qualifications. We also want to establish and grow a digital community around STEPS. So we'll also be setting up a STEPS peer network. All gatekeepers and those level four trained trainers will be invited to opt into that network. And within the network, we'll be providing regular comms with the four partner organizations around the models development. People will also have access to new digital content and new qualifications information. In fact, we've got more qualifications in the pipeline planned for the next couple of years. And importantly, access to those evaluation findings that Katrina's just been talking about. We also aim to arrange an annual conference, which will probably be digital via the LearnBox platform. Thank you, Bob. Okay, today we're issuing a challenge and we're calling on you, the 
yes, all of you, to get involved with steps and help us to reduce, to reduce suicide. Okay, so this is um, a call out to all training providers and um, we're really keen to hear from uh, existing NCFE or cash centres, but also any organisations that are interested in getting involved in, in de uh, delivering these qualifications um, at level two and at level three. Um, so you'll see uh, that there is a website there, there's an email address, um, and if you're interested in the level four train, the trainer programme, to give you uh, the deeper knowledge and the expertise and the skills to be able to deliver the level two, and level three really effectively. Uh, there is that level four train the trainer pro program available from BDLD. Um, there was a question that came in, in, in around that uh, that I'll just answer. So the level four program is um, endorsed by NCFE, but uh, we've decided not to go down the off-call regulated route. Um, so that's just to give you a sense that it's a train the trainer program that just gives us a bit more flexibility uh, to, to make sure people are equipped uh, and, and set up for success. So the level two and level three uh, can be delivered through uh, NCFE centres. Um, we, we'll not get into the detail now uh, in terms of how you get set up for that, but the team will very quickly, you know, straight away after this webinar, would be able to pick up if you're an existing centre that wants to add these qualifications to the portfolio, or if you're a new centre that's interested in, in working with uh, NCFE or CASH. Um, just to clarify as well, so NCFE is the whole organisation, Cash is the brand that is associated with all things uh, education, uh, health and childcare. So it's a cash qualification essentially that we've developed with the suicide um, awareness and prevention being so closely linked to all things health and, and obviously particularly mental health. Um, so whether you're an NCF or an NCFE or, or a cash centre, um, you could add this qualification to your portfolio. Um, anticipating one of the questions that we know will be asked at a point in time, is there any funding available for these programmes? Um, not yet, but we are very hopeful that ESFA will associate some funding uh, to the level two. Uh, we have written to the, to the chief exec of the ESFA to see if things can be expedited, but I'm sure all of you in education know that it's been a really tricky summer, so some things have not necessarily moved as quickly as possible, but we're very hopeful that funding will be uh, available soon. Um, and we're hoping that funding will enable this programme to be delivered to, to learners that are already in um, the further education system, to the workforce in, in the system, but also people more broadly as well on, on uh, a range of programmes that it's um, a relatively short course, so could quite easily be bolted onto a bigger programme that, that any uh, particular learner in any particular group is, uh, is studying. We've got this ambition, and, and it's a, a bit of a wild ambition, I suppose, but we want everybody in the country uh, to, to be trained in suicide awareness and prevention, because the more people that are trained, you know, the more lives that we've got a chance of, of saving. Um, so that's just a bit of a sense in, in terms of uh, how to get set up. Uh, as I say, there's a lot more technical detail that sits underneath that. If you've got any questions, fire them in, and we'll try to answer them in the chat. Um, but otherwise, feel free to, to hop on the website or, or email the team. Thank you, David. And yeah, if you're a learner and you want to develop your own understanding of suicide and you want to know more about the level two, particularly uh, if you can contact us at cash.org.uk uh, forward slash steps. And can I just add to that as well, um, Lucy and David, if you're a frontline worker or an employer, or you're someone who has a role in leading on well-being or suicide issues within your organization or within your industry, and you'd like to learn more about how to have that conversation uh, via the Level 3 award, again, you can use that um, link, cash.org.uk forward slash steps. I'm not sure if we've lost Kev. Kev, are you there? Yes, yeah, sorry. I, uh, Mr. Gallagher, very, very gallantly said my bit for me. So, uh, but just to say again, the level four is only being offered by BDLD. So, if you are interested in the trainer trainer program, there's a dedicated email address there that will come through to the pair of us, and we'll come back to you. And if you're an employer and you'd like to introduce gatekeepers to your organization to support staff or customers, visit cash.org.uk forward, forward, 
<laughs> forward slash steps to register your interest. <laughs> Thanks, Katrina. Um, steps has been a culmination of people with purpose working hard to make a vision a reality with the aim of reducing the stigma um, of suicide and normalising the conversation and hopefully saving lives. There's a lot of people that have been involved in this project um, and rather than me saying thank you to all of them, it would take probably too long. Um, we've put thank yous at the end of the video, at the end um, of the session to thank those. So anybody that has been involved, thank you and please look out for your name. Um, personally, I'd like to thank Kev, Bob, Katrina and David. Um, we've been on a real journey in the last six months and this has had a huge impact on me personally and on the business and I have really got some friends for life so thank you all so much. Q&A, let's go before she gets emotional. <laughs> Okay, um, Sophie Allen's asking if there'll be a copy of the recording as there's heaps of valuable information. Thank you, Sophie, for your question. Yes, of course there will be. Uh, Sharon says, well done to Lee. Thank you, Sharon. Thanks, Sharon. <laughs> Alison says, awesome, thank you. Um, Lee Dale, what cost would be associated with the level four train the trainer, please? Kev, I'm gonna give that one to you. Yeah, sure. Um... I'm not going to say a number out loud because it really depends on things like if an organization gets in touch and has a team that need training and a venue, then that will affect the price. What I would say is the price isn't going to be any higher than the trainer training for other programs such as mental health, first aid and assist. Thank you, Kev. Um, Kate Jones, could I also request a recording of the webinar? Very interesting looking into the courses. Yes, 100%. That will be sent out to everybody. Um, again, same for Michelle. We, you will get a copy. Um, Michelle Rose, I would love to do the online course independently. Please advise. Okay, Michelle, if you go to the website, and we'll put it on again at the end, I'm sure, um, or Lee might be able to help, uh, cash.org forward slash steps. Am I right, Lee? Oh, dot UK slash steps. Okay, yeah, that's the one. <laughs> so there you go, Michelle. Thanks for helping me out, Lee. Um, Lucy, can I chuck in on that one, please? Yeah, of course you can. What, what's really important for us to emphasise is that the qualifications go live today. So right now, at this moment, no providers have got accreditation to deliver this. So if someone wanted to do the level two or level three tomorrow, unfortunately, they can't because we need our first colleges, training providers, getting in touch and getting their accreditation from cash. But certainly please remember that web address and that email address where you can register interest. And I know that colleagues at cash will then be able to uh, notify you when an organization has got that accreditation. We can take bookings on the level four because that accreditation is in place. Thanks, Lucy. No problem. Um, Andrea sent a message to say that she's already sent an email to find out more. Um, she's already delivering the mental health training in further education setting, but the suicide and training awareness would be a great addition. Thank you, Andrea. Um, and she's also interested in the train the trainer. So we'll be back in touch on the back of your email. Thanks, Andrea. Um, Dan Howard, uh, proud of you all. Well done. Thank you, Dan. And thanks for all your hard work on this. Um, Rachel Byrne is asking, uh, would all students have to do level two before level three? Bob, I'm going to give that one to you if that's okay. Yeah, sure. Uh, quick answer, not necessarily. Uh, and very much what we've tried to do with the level two and level three is pitch them, not those, qualif those qualifications that need to follow a line of progression, but more focused on what the role somebody may have within their organization or in their life. What are they trying to achieve? So level two is really focused on general uh, raising of awareness and knowledge around suicide, which itself is useful. Level three will include some of that knowledge, but it will go straight in on that practitioner level, as we've mentioned. So you can really pitch your access to the training based on the role that you're going to have beyond the training. Thanks, Bob. Um, Graham Watts, what would be the scheme approval costs and what are the qualifications needed to deliver this? I'm going to give that to you if that's all right. Uh, yeah, it's not a short answer. Um, so, so I'm going to give a short answer instead. Uh, and say You've please. never given a short answer in your <laughs> life. <laughs> uh, please do have a look at the qualification specification. Lee, I think I'm right in saying they are now live on the website. Uh, yeah, they are. 
work with cash to be as clear as we can in terms of expectations on delivery and expectations on trainer assessor um, specification as well. So please do have a look there and feel free to have a chat with the team at cash about it. Cheers, Kev. Um, okay. Uh, Michelle McFarlane, sorry, uh, what are the costs, please? I'm not sure whether you think we've covered this already, but if you haven't, Bob or Kev, if you want to jump in on that one. Probably you, Kev, I suspect. Maybe I, I can cover it off. As I say, with the level four, it, it's very variable, the arrangement we would have with a client, whether it's a trainer being referred through to us or a team. Um, the level two, we would recommend that any provider or college offering that commercially would probably be looking at between 120 and 150 pounds for someone to complete that course. And for the level three, again, in terms of approximate value, we would suggest that providers would charge between 150 and 175 pounds for that. Thank you very much. Okay, um, Pamela Coleman, um, I work with people with learning disabilities. Will the resources be simple and clear? Um, from, a, from an online perspective, 100%, yeah, they, they're very, very simple, very easy to use. The tech is very simple as well, Pamela. And if you wanted to have a demo, again, just get in touch through the website, through Cash, and we'll be more than happy to show you that as well. Um, Michelle Rose says, thank you. Um, Penny Ambrose, can you deliver the level four in Northern Ireland? Who wants to take this? Shall I take this one, little dog? Yeah, yeah, good question. Um, I'm glad someone asked a question about non-England um, because the level two and level three are Ofqual regulated, therefore only valid in England. But we're doing some testing shortly uh, down in Wales. So we want to take the product where the need is and we'll work with the appropriate regulatory organisation. The level four is, with all due respect to NCFE's accreditation, it's just an accredited programme no off call involvement so therefore i don't see any reason why we couldn't take that anywhere pack your bags little dog Make the bike ready and just just to add to that um so off call regulated qualifications can be delivered internationally and um, we just have to work with the relevant regulators as you say um, and yes northern ireland would count as international from from a regulatory perspective as would you know scotland wales and and, and then further, further overseas as well um, so it can be delivered and it, and it would be, I suppose, valid. It wouldn't necessarily be uh, recognised by that, that regulator within that particular country. Um, but we, as, as Kevin says, we're very happy to, to work with regulators. Lots of our existing cash qualifications are the recognised qualification in lots of different countries, you know, from the Middle East to Africa to Southeast Asia. So, and, and so certainly, you know, Northern Ireland, from, from our perspective, would be very supportive. Of, of this qualification being picked up in uh, different countries that's fantastic if we can make that happen let's make I, it happen I, yeah th th there's some real aspirations on this partnership and where it can go so first of all bob mentioned earlier we've got other qualifications in the pipeline for the next two years that we want to focus on around the subject of mental health where we see a need secondly from next year we're going to be looking at adapting the steps model to be contextualized for certain priority groups for instance the unemployed prisoners homeless domestic violence victims but thirdly we know that suicide is a global issue and this is a unique delivery model created by us and we think that there is an international market that would very much benefit from it and we're keen to work in partnership with organizations on that Big Dog Little Dog is a unique organisation in that, as its name suggests, there's only two of us. There will only ever be two of us. So partnership is in the spirit of what we do. Thanks, Kev. Um, Lorna Sutton has said it's a very worthy project and it should be a mainstream ed education. Absolutely. Lorna, completely agree with you. Thank you for your comments. Um, Leanne Pembrose, uh, brilliant job. Well done, everybody. Caroline Blaney, brilliant information. Thank you. If you'd like to complete the level three, please get in touch. Poppy Waters, brilliant webinar. Found this really insightful and the steps break down really helpful. Thank you. Um, Jane Hickey's given us a well done and said the video running through the AELP conference today was really impactful. No problemo. Um, 
Vicky Sellers, thank you so much for this. I suffer from depression and know I can help others with how they are feeling, but never fully trusted myself. If I could now do a level two, three and four, that would be great. Vicky, your comments mean everything. Thank you very much for that. Um, Mandy, great to hear I might be available in Wales and Northern Ireland. Uh, Penny, great, let's bring it over here then. Uh, I think that's in relation to the Northern Ireland comment. Uh, great session, brilliant information, lots to take in, be useful to have the information to share with others that I work with. Karina will make sure that that gets to you. Please drop us an email and we'll get the recording to you. Um, what is the cost of the level two? Who wants to take that one? Kev has already covered, I think. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. so um, we, we would expect a provider to price that at somewhere between 120 and 150 pounds per learner. Okay, uh, Lee Dale, would the level four course need to be conducted face-to-face -face for individual, individuals or will there be an on, online webinars at set times each year? Good question. So the level four, I mentioned earlier, there are two units to it, a two-dayer um, to learn how to deliver the level two in suicide awareness and a three-dayer to deliver the level three in having the conversation. The default delivery model for that is face-to-face with the final day being remote, including a micro team. Having said that, there's no reason why that course can't be delivered remotely. Where we are cautious about remote delivery at the moment is the level three, because we do appreciate what a sensitive subject suicide can be, and we want to make sure checks and balances are in place to maintain everyone's well-being. The level two learn box version there are uh, statements throughout encouraging people to check in with themselves, to take breaks if they want them. We've hard coded breaks in there to force people to have breaks from the content. And we give crisis contact details throughout. This is such a sensitive subject that we need to ensure the safety of our learners before anything else. Thanks, Kev. Um, a question from Joe Keys um, Is STEP suitable for autistic individuals? Bob, I'm wondering well, you yeah, would be best to answer that. Yeah, uh, please. Yeah, I can. In some ways, that follows on from the uh, points Kevin was making earlier about how we're looking to adjust the training around different customer groups, if you like, or learner groups. Um, and Kev was giving examples of people in prisons, uh, people maybe victims of domestic violence, etc. And we'd be more than happy to explore with organisations that work uh, with people on the autistic spectrum if there's um, any way we can develop the course to meet their needs as well. Absolutely, we'd be keen to have that conversation. Thank you. Um, lots of great comments coming through. Very informative, great work all from Lucy Hunt, Lee Dale, great. Thank you for an informative and thorough session. Uh, Alison Ray, this was absolutely fantastic. I work for a big college in East Anglia supporting apprentices in the workplace all over East Anglia in the Southeast. A lot of health workers, but, but also apprentices in other vocational areas. So appropriate, so appropriate with what I am doing. Definitely taking this to my line manager so it links with the cognitive support we give also on welfare support. Yeah, thank you, great session. I believe that this has a great platform to enable people to ask hard questions and make a difference in people's lives. Thank you, Jamie Jackson. That's exactly why we're doing it. And I think that's probably quite a nice note for us to end on. Um, if there's any other questions or anything that you don't feel has been answered, please get in touch through the website and we'll, we'll help out as much as we can. Um, we will send you a recording and we'll be in touch via email. Lucy, um, could, but on could, behalf, I, yes. could I just give a shout out to Vicky, please? First of all, to thank her for being open about the mental health challenges she's had. Secondly, yep, yeah, come on this journey with us. Thirdly, Vicky, you're me 25 years ago uh, that's where my journey in the mental health sector started with a diagnosis of severe depression uh, and we can be the change we want to be so come and join us thanks lucy no problem kev it wouldn't have been any normal meeting than any others we've had without you butting in at the end and taking over so thank you for keeping to form and doing that for me um, and without Lucy, further I'm going to make it even worse. I'm going to make it even worse. I'm going to do it as well. Sorry. Um, oh, this God. is what I'm out of lots of the meetings. So there's just one, one, I think, important point I want to clarify. And it is just, a, I suppose, it's a minor detail in some ways, but on pricing. So Kevin was talking about the, uh, the pricing for the delivery of the level four. In terms of the level two online, uh, we'll be able to confirm prices very quickly. But it looks as though for 
uh, registration, certification, all of the digital content and everything that's needed to deliver the level two online, it's £56. And I just need to double double check this, but if you're not using the online version, so it's been delivered in a, in a classroom, a training room type environment, it's around £35. But the cash team will be able to confirm those prices to send us as well. Uh, which means that, you know, if we do secure the ESFA funding for those programmes, you know, it's a relatively small cost and, and theoretically the level two online can be fully delivered through that online solution as well. So hopefully it's really attractive uh, for centres to uh, not only deliver a programme that makes a huge difference um, uh, to, to, well, to, to people's lives, but also you can make it work. It's viable financially to do that. So I, I just wanted to, um, to clarify that point. Um, and then one last thing, Lucy, sorry. Um, you'll notice that quite a lot of the questions were answered within the chat. Um, so if your question hasn't been answered, um, if you check out the chat, but also we'll make sure that anything that hasn't been picked up um, comes out in, in the follow up as well. So the, those questions that, that weren't answered because we've run out of time and uh, do get responded to. Thank you, David. Is there anything else from anybody else before I wrap this up? No, okay. Um, thank you so much to everybody for joining us today. As I mentioned at the start, I can't tell you how much this means to us um, and the efforts that have gone in behind the scenes. So thank you to everybody that's helped us on this project. Thank you to everybody here today. And yeah, please do get in touch and work with us um, because together we can save lives. Thank you very much. There's a disease out there. There's a disease out there that kills more people than cancers of the brain, stomach, ovary or kidney. There's a disease out there that no blood test or x-ray can diagnose. There's a disease out there that won't be cured by just medication. There's a disease out there that kills three men for every woman. There's a disease out there that kills more people than cancer of the brain, stomach, ovary or kidney but nobody has to die from it there's a disease out there that no blood test or x-ray can diagnose but all of us can carry out a test on each other just by asking about it there's a disease out there that won't be cured by just medication but listening empathizing caring and helping out can destroy it there's a disease out there that kills three men for every woman but you have the power 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 to help them survive it